Imagine a thousand passengers crammed into a spaceship. Now imagine that ship being a wobbly upside down triangle hurtling through space while morphing into a gigantic scrunchie. Welcome to my space colonization nightmare and the most ambitious Kerbal Space Program 2 project ever attempted. Our mission? To fill the massive dress station with crew to truly colonize space. We had some insane requirements for this build. Firstly, it would need to house at least 1,000 passengers. Secondly, it had to be big, like really big. Lastly, of course, it had to be structurally sound, which is near impossible in the current state of the game. Our design, a unique, long, upside down triangle emerged from careful consideration. Placing the engines at the top allowed for a more stable flight, reducing the wobble often encountered with long vessels. It wasn't the most typical approach, but this was my only option. Constructing this behemoth was a special kind of torture, as each launch test took an agonizing 10 minutes to load, or often than not, it spontaneously explode into fragments. But after countless nights of tinkering and doing nothing but adding more struts, the explosions finally stopped. Then came the launch. This was around our 10th attempt, and surprisingly, it wasn't a disaster. It looked incredibly impressive and immensely powerful seeing this thing fly. But unexpectedly, mid-flight, a major issue occurred, where there was a fuel imbalance that threatened to send us crashing back to the surface. Thankfully though, the pause button enabled us to manually equalize the fuel tanks, thereby stopping the imbalance and preventing us from becoming fireworks. Then, not long after, we finally achieved orbit. And we ran out of fuel. In fact, this was intentional. In order to reduce potential issues for our launch, I decided to ensure that the fuel would only get us to orbit and no further. This was to reduce the chance of more explosions occurring due to there being more parts and more mass to handle. So, we built a refueling ship with a bunch of hydrogen bores and fuel tanks that would hopefully enable us to traverse space to our destination, Dres. Docking was very challenging because the colony ship was often flexing, almost like it was trying to escape us. And while our refueling ship was hard to control due to its immense mass. Time flew as failure after failure occurred, but eventually, we successfully docked, allowing us to finally perform a fuel transfer. Then the inevitable occurred. The Kraken got mad, really mad, and decided to tango with our ship, turning it into a little cute scrunchie. Okay, well that was unexpected, but luckily we had unbreakable joints enabled, which in combination with time warping seemed to temporarily stop this madness. Finally, we throttled up, cautiously to around about 20% thrust, to hopefully reduce that wobble that you might encounter at 100% thrust. That was until I realised that the struts on the ship were gone, which is really strange. This meant the ship stability was out the window. It would tango with the Kirk Kraken at a moment's notice. With our journey looking a little bleak and very wobbly now, we commenced our journey to Dres. This trip took several real life nights, as eventually I had to throttle down even lower due to our ship becoming a scrunchy a couple more times along the way. To make matters worse, midway we ran out of fuel. Our colony ship was stranded. And if this was something in real life, the passengers would probably die. 
Well, but luckily our passengers don't eat food or anything. So we had to launch another refueling ship and take it all the way to our colony ship to dock once again for refueling. Days passed and then we finally reached Dress. But given the fact that this was somewhat uncontrollable, I figured maybe a space tug would be a good idea. After all, cargo ships in real life sometimes use tugs to help you know, large ships maneuver around ports. Assuming the concept from the oceans works in space, this could allow us to dock with Dress Station a little easily. So I launched a space tug too, and eventually docked with our ship. Finally, approaching the Dress Station, we got an intercept and crept slowly closer and closer. Though this was concerning. Why? Well, our current colony ship consists of over a thousand parts, while the dress station is also a thousand parts. This means when we are in close proximity, the game will have to load both ships simultaneously, thus causing my computer to possibly explode. So here we are. After getting within proximity, everything stopped. My computer almost halted. Then came the sound of all my PC fans running overdrive like this would melt my computer. Then patiently, after waiting a while, 10 minutes later, it loaded. We were there. Now at a painfully slow 2 FPS or something, we had to somehow dock. This was a whole other beast. On several occasions, the RCS thrusters were too strong and unpredictable. Having exacerbated the wobble on several occasions, we had the time warp to stop the scrunchiness from occurring. A couple nights of failed docking attempts passed. It kept, we kept trying and trying, but eventually I did nothing. I let my computer just point to the docking port from the other, from, towards the other ship. And eventually with a terrible bang and a 20 minute long game freeze, it finally loaded. The monstrosity that has taken months of effort and planning, the stupidly insane plan, as I'd call it, had somehow birthed this beautiful, albeit slightly battered and bruised station. <laughs> the wobble and time warping, it seemed, had caused the ship to misalign a bunch of parts. That's why it looks a little bad in some areas. But our goal was achieved. I've linked the builds and save file in the description, so if you're masochistically inclined and want to try this yourself, please be my guest. Thank you for watching.